Hello and welcome to today's video. If you don't have seen uh, the last video about uh, string on the windshield, please watch them first. Um, and today we start with slip, skid and crab. Actually more about crab. Um, and to explain this we need wind. Um, actually crosswind. So for the videos following I um, adjusted my um, weather system to 10 meters per second, but uh, it's about 20 uh, knots crosswind. So uh, it would be necessary to explain. So what happens with crosswind is, uh, or desired ground drag, it's be the, the gray error uh, to uh, target the yellow cross um, is the intended uh, flight path, but the crosswind will push us away from the intended flight path. So if you do not correct that crosswind action so we don't want to get to our target so if you fly longer distances uh, and you have a visual references like a mountaintop or a city or something like that uh, uh, you will automatically correct your course for the crosswind influences but you did not want to fly the, the direct or the shortest way to your destination so it will be uh, something like a half curve, uh, it, it will be much longer, it will take you more time and actually you need more fuel. And uh, fuel consumption may be critical for your flight. In real life you will prefer uh, to make a pre-flight planning, so you take the uh, available weather information and you try to um, calculate a compass heading, uh, uh, a track to fly where the crosswind is pushing you on back to your intended uh, ground track and the ground track will be the shortest way to your destination so according to uh, how strong the crosswind is you have a diversion from your actual map heading to the heading you will fly to the compass heading just to uh, avoid the influence of crosswind so when you're looking uh, uh, on the helicopter above, you have your intended ground track, but you will fly a little bit an angle into the wind to compensate for the push factor uh, where the crosswind will push you away from your ground track. So you will fly against the wind. And uh, if you do that correct, then your calculation will be correct. And of course your weather information was correct. You may stay on your ground track, even if you have a different compass heading. It is mandatory for every pilot, regardless if you're flying a helicopter or an airplane, uh, if you fly cross country or longer distances to make such calculations uh, in, and uh, of course your pre-flight planning. So let's switch over to the helicopter cockpit. And uh, so we try to take off from our parking position. But right now we have 20 knots uh, tailwind, so it may be a little bit bumpy or yep, a little bit difficult to take off. And we see it on the, on the string on the windshield right now, the strong crosswind from the right. Uh, <coughs> but now we turn into the wind. So the string on the windshield will be a good uh, indicator for that. And now we try to fly direct to the end of the runway. So if you want to, if you want to reach, if you want to reach the end of the runway without uh, flying a curve or something like that, our heading should be into the wind. So we correct your fl our flight angle, um, and we can take our string on the windshield as an indication for a correct wind correction or grab angle so it's actual in, in, in an airplane it's called flip or, um, or, or crab angle um, yo that's what we do right here and so we reach our the end of the runway in on, on the shortest way uh, on this point uh, we don't use panels uh, on a PC it's uh, very hard to do that uh, so we talk about pedals uh, in a few minutes. So first we turn into the wind. So when we're flying into the wind, there will be no cr uh, crab angle 
any more necessary so the wind is coming from straight ahead so we look on our string on the windshield everything is fine and we turn back to our runway or actually um, turning on base so uh, talking about uh, the the pedals so in in real life uh, forces acting on a helicopter the wind flow over the canopy uh, um, and the pressure coming from the from the tail rotor to the pedals um, uh, is trying to equalize it himself so as a pilot you can take off your feet from the pedals and if you have forward speed uh, uh, it, the helicopter will uh, get by himself into balance so you don't have to push pedals uh, that's not so easy on a PC because your pedals may have strings uh, springs pardon, springs in, uh, mounted inside so your pedals uh, try to get always uh, back to the neutral position so that makes it uh, much harder on the PC to fly crab angles and stuff like that or uh, wind correction angles because you, uh, you don't have the, the real feeling uh, and you get always pressure from your pedals they uh, want to try to get back into the neutral position so right now we tr uh, I try to that's my first time uh, flying the gazelle with wind and actually 20 knots uh, crosswind that's a lot uh, uh, in, in real life we should take the other runway but we uh, now with the crosswind landing we use the runway straight ahead and I have to fight against the crosswind to keep the run to the helicopter over the runway not to uh, push to the left uh, due to the crosswind coming from the right so right now uh, our windshield string says uh, everything is fine and our helicopter nose is parallel to the runway but uh, I also have um, installed gust so it's a little bit gusty so wind direction will be changed a little bit but as, oh, yeah, now it, it comes from the right uh, when we closer to the runway our string on the windshield will indicate a strong crosswind from the right and uh, we now take our crab angle to prevent uh, uh, getting pushed to the left due to the crosswind holding our crab angle close to the ground um, so that's a normal procedure you don't correct a uh, crab angles with pedals you fly the helicopter close to the ground and just before touchdown you may use uh, you may use your pedals to bring the, take the helicopter straight out just before touchdown uh, to prevent any side words movements during the actual touchdown uh, because any sideward movements is very dangerous uh, it may lead to dynamic rollover when touching the ground dynamic rollover will be a subject uh, discussed in in another special okay that was not too bad it was not really good but it was not too bad so uh, let's take off for another try so and again flying straight out with a crosswind from le from the left with 20 knots so um, intended destination will be uh, right from the mountains in, in, in the front so we have to use a cross angle on, on the <coughs> outside view it may, it's very nice to see we have a, 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 a much bigger gra uh, crab angle than I thought um, so we keep our ground track by grabbing into the wind um, and neutralizing the crosswind effects on the helicopter and so we stay on the shortest way turning turning final to the runway again second try and again uh, so on the outside view the, the crab angle it's uh, much better to see so with 20 knots crosswind there is a big crab angle necessary to hold the helicopter um, on the runway center line or actually to find the, the runway center line and uh, with that crab angle we, we um, reduce your altitude descending to the runway
And as I said, uh, in, in real life, uh, the helicopter will align himself. Um, in, uh, on, on the PC, we don't have the feeling uh, on the pedals. There is no for, for force feedback on the pedals from the tail rotor or something like that. That makes it much more difficult. And touch down with the nose into the wind. So that's in, in, in an airplane. It, it wasn't possible. You have to line out uh, with the uh, runway but in the helicopter you can turn into the wind just before touchdown but be careful uh, don't have any sideward movement when touching the ground uh, because dynamic rollover is a real danger for helicopters again third try uh, that looks much better so i Got a little bit more familiar with the gazelle uh, during uh, uh, at crosswind conditions, and uh, I like the back view. <laughs> Approaching the runway, holding the crab angle. We get a little bit short, but uh, the signs on the runway, it's uh, for airliners and heavy airplanes. Uh, as a helicopter, we can uh, land even on that uh, part of the runway, not, not intended to land. Okay, let's take off. At, uh, build up a little bit speed, a little bit uh, altitude and a little bit more forward speed. And uh, the same as for landings, also uh, um, we use the crab angle during takeoffs. Just after takeoff, uh, we catch a little bit speed and a little bit altitude. Uh, the wind is turning into the wind and we take off with the crab angle. Um, right now we did something like um, a, a quick stop. So reducing speed again, turning into the wind and Touch down the helicopter on the center line of the runway or near the center line of the runway. Uh, let's do it again. So as I said, even uh, um, during the takeoff, we use the same maneuvers. We crab into the wind right after takeoff when we get a little bit altitude, a little bit airspeed, crabbing into the wind. In this case, uh, I'm fl fl following the center line now, crapping into the wind. And when we get airspeed above 40 knots, 40, 50, 60 knots, um, so um, the helicopter nose lines up in flight direction because of the airflow um, around the, the fuselage. So uh, it works like a windsock and uh, the, the effects from the crosswind uh, will be neutralized by the forward speed. Um, of course, except uh, for the effects during cross country uh, that the crosswind pushes us away from our desired ground track over uh, longer distances or lo longer flight time. So take off again. So uh, that's the part um, about crab. Uh, now we're changing to skid and slip. Actually, we're starting with slip. Um, when um, flying a curve, we only use um, our cyclic control. We don't use pedals. According to the helicopter handbook, um, you don't have to use pedals, you should not use pedals when flying um, a turn, regardless of to the right or to the left. Um, don't do it, because you maybe come into a slip or skid situation. And if you fly a normal turn only by applying um, cyclic pressure in the direction of your intended flight. so. The um, radius of your curve will be determined by the rate of bank and your actual airspeed and you don't have to use pedals. If you use pedals, 
more than necessary or less than necessary or too much to the right or too much to the left you get into a slip situation that means uh, your um, radius will be smaller or you get into a skid situation that means your radius of turn will be bigger so right now um, we starting our left turn and we apply left pedal so we come into a slip situation um, slip may be used to uh, destroy altitude intentionally destroy altitude because uh, the drag on the airfoil will be increased very much the helicopter will drop down from the air like a stone and if you uh, apply too much paddle um, as you have seen right now the, uh, the helicopter will be uh, get out of control so that's the real danger and um, uh, in real life you may uh, use techniques like S-turns to descend uh, in a rapid way or you enter an auto rotation so uh, that's also a safe way to descend uh, with higher rates than uh, normal sink rates so we're back in flight altitude and try it again left turn and this time we apply right pedal to stretch or curve and even if you apply too much uh, right pedal you have the same effect uh, in the gazelle net not that bad like uh, uh, in a slip situation but also it may be uh, easily out of control and uh, actually it's uh, some kind of stupid as a helicopter pilot using slip or skid as a technique to uh, losing altitude uh, as I said uh, there will be a much better race as turns or uh, entering auto rotations so thank you for watching um, please subscribe to my channel if you do have if you do have any questions or comments please let me know in the comments below thank you very much and hope I will see you again next time bye bye